Hi, and welcome to my playhouse. And today, I would like to introduce you to the newest member of the happy family here at my playhouse. I just got, or actually I've had it for a week or so, I have gotten the IBM slash Lenovo X3650 Model 4. And this is the newest server that I currently have now. And I haven't even had it on yet, but I thought let's let's do this video series right this time. I've just gotten this server, so let's go through all the phases like checking it out and mounting it and putting power on it for the first time and firmware updating it and all of this good sh stuff. But in this video, we're just gonna have a look at it. Make sure that everything looks cool. Uh, this is a used server that I have gotten from Hungary. And here is the invoice for it. I actually paid 649 euros for the server, 35 euros in shipping. That came to a total of 684 euros. So awesome. And it was delivered to me just before Christmas. I think Actually, the 21 is probably accurate. Um, I'm not able to read Hungarian, so uh, um, I'm guessing here. And I ordered it on the 13th, and I think I think I got it before the 21. So they were good on that one. So let's just see the server. It oh, we have all the numbers here actually too. They are down here. Uh, IBM system 3650 model M4. Two Xeon quad cores, four cores, E5 2609, and these are 2.4 gigahertz processors. They're the first generation of the E5. There is 22 gigabytes of RAM, 8x SSF. That's a base here. That means that there are eight of those that are occupied. Um, and there is 292 gigabyte of hard drive. There is a M5110E RAID controller and two 550 watt power supplies. Awesome. So this is how the server looks and it's a used server. It has some scratches and some marks here. It seems like it hasn't been handled very good when they took this down, which is a bit of a shame. I do like them when they look nice. And also over here, I'm missing the IBM slash Lenovo sign. That should really be here. So that's too bad. The hard drives in it are two different drives. Here is one of them. It's a 146 gigabyte drive. The other one, see if it's the same brand. Mm, no, it's not the same model numbers. Both are IBM branded. Both are IBM branded. Both are 146 gigabytes and 15,000 RPMs, six gigabit SAS drives. So so far so good, but they have different numbers on them. This is a regular one. I know this one. This one is um, I don't know that one. It has some weird numbers. I don't know what this came out of, but. Well, who cares? I have enough drives. I didn't get this server for the drives, that's for sure. But let's put these back in. Otherwise, on the front here, we have... Let's just start all the way over here, Reg. We have the model number and we have a serial number. This is the IBM 7915 and it has the, the three letters C3G and that's what the server came with when it was new um, it could have come with that kind of CN processors that amount of hard drives, that amount of RAM and so on and that's that number says something about that the one up here it has another one and that's AC1 and AC1 is usually when this server is custom built I don't want any of the standards that IBM supplies. I can have them deliver a custom server to me and then it usually gets the AC1 model number. But, well, a base and all the way over here is occupied by backplane in here. That's sweet. Eight drives available. 
The next two is empty. There is nothing on the back of those. And that is very regular. It's actually pretty expensive to get more than eight bays. The, the hardware for, for doing the next bays are rather expensive. So, but let's go over here. Yeah, a total of 16 bays is in the server. We have a VGA connection, awesome. We have a DVD slash CD-ROM drive. Uh, we have two USB ports and that's USB 2 ports. We have a sticker that says that there is a CN inside. And then we have the Diagnostics Ridge Light Path Diagnostics panel here, which will light up if there is something wrong with something inside the server. And it will also blink out here with um, what's going on with the server. There's the power on button, there's the network connection, there is the light tower, and there is a couple of buttons here that I can't see at the moment. So, well, we'll get to those. It has a place for if you want to put in a tape drive that goes in there. I do not believe that is regularly used, but let's go around the back. See what we have here. On the back, we have four one gigabit ethernet network cards. One, two, three, four. And then we have the IMM management adapter. That's right there. We have a VGA connection. We have some thingy here for cable management, uh, which is pretty much in the way right now. We have a serial connection. We have three LEDs here, one for power, one for the light tower, and there is one for attention. It will light up if there's something wrong with the server. That will be it. Then there is a place here, and that's marked down here with network number five and over here with network number six. And that's because you can get an optional 10 gigabit uh, adapter that will fit right here. So you can have your 10 gigabits coming out of the server right there. And that if you get that, that means it will not take up a PCI Express slot here. So that's a really good option. Plus they are usually pretty cheap-ish. Like you get a discount if you get the one from IBM or Denoble. Then we have another four USB ports over here that can be used for your KVM switch and so. At the end we have two power supplies. In, this has been bent and that's... I am a bit irritated about... Oh, it still works it seems, but the power supply is pretty easy to see that this piece of metal has had some <clears throat> misfortune in its life, but well we have a couple of power supplies. These are really good quality 80 plus platinum power supplies and they will deliver 550 watts each and they are able to make a redundant system here. It will tell me if the AC is good, if the DC is good and if there is some kind of an error. And when we go into the lid we will see that there is an explanation on how these LED works. The server is able to handle six PCI Express ports. There is only three in this one, and we'll see that when we get inside. On the side here, there's a nice label that tells you that this server is more than 18 kilograms, so you need two persons to lift it. I think 15 kilograms is just about the limit for what all the server suppliers say that an IT dude can lift, but well, you better better remember to be two persons. <laughs> and there is an, another label here that tells you that when the server is outside of the rack and hanging, it's not a good idea to put any kind of uh, force on here. That's kind of a weight thing that they're showing us there. So, well, let's go inside. On the top here, there is a little bit about how to rem install and how to remove this server from the rack. If you have mounted it on rack uh, rails, um, there is an explanation on how to push and do stuff when you want it uh, out again. So I didn't get rack rails with this, but... Oh, and on the inside, there is a big explanation about what everything is, including a good explanation on how the power supplies, the LEDs and stuff works on the back of that. Here's something about service information. There is a QR tag 
hot swap power supplies, common replacement parts, hot swap fans, hot swap hard drive base, the operate information panel, which is the LEDs on the front that I could not see all of them. There is something about if they light up, what does that mean? Here is the light path diagnostics, the PCI Express riser cards. Here is how the RAM has to go in. If you, in which order you put in the RAM, if there is one processor, if, if there is two processors, you just follow that and you should be good to go. Putting in CPU, and an overview of the motherboard down here with a lot of things that you can see here. It has a big plastic thing here to direct the airflow from these big fans in the right direction and not blowing all over the place. And up here there is also a compartment for putting in some uh, batteries or yeah, battery installation. So you can have batteries that go over to your RAID controller and they will be put in this plastic thing. But well, let's take this out. It's, um, it's not good for getting a good overview of the server. This server has 24 slots for RAM. It has two CPUs and it uses the Intel Xeon E5 2600 series, the original one and the version two. It's not able to do version three and four, but one and two will be good. The server can handle 768 gigabytes of RAM if you occupy all of these slots with 32 gigabyte blocks, it will do that. It, the maximum frequency of the RAM is 1866 megahertz. You'll not get that high if you occupy all the RAM slots. Each processor has four memory channels, which means that you can in each channel put three DIMMs. But if you want to run with the fastest possible RAM frequency, you have to leave out the last RAM block in each channel. Uh, you won't be able to fill up the server entirely. You will have to go down from the 768 gigabytes down to 512 gigabytes of memory. Um, then you can run maximum speed. If you occupy just one of the last slots, the frequency will drop considerably all the way down to 1066 megahertz on the RAM frequency. I'm not sure what frequency this RAM is. Uh, I'm not gonna care. I'm probably gonna exchange them soon, but that's how that is. Um, also, I am planning to put on some new CPUs because these are not the highest. And I'm planning to run this server 24 seven. So I want some faster CPUs. I'm in the market for those. Over here is the riser card and that we can take out and have a look inside. There. This riser card has three connections for PCI Express cards and they're all X16s. So this is really cool for what I'm planning to do with this server. If the server only has one processor, it's only able to do one riser card. This server has two processors, so I would be able to occupy this riser card over here which seems to never has been in use there is a sticker over the riser card connector so at some point i will get another riser card for that and while we're at it we can also see the plug here for the extension card that could go over here with the two extra 10 gigabit connections out there we have power output here for something like a graphics card which is very much what i would want to put in this riser card over here we have room for an extension for the rate controller the rate controller is built into the motherboard and i'm guessing very much that this is the chip for the rate controller and the connections for the rate controller go out here and goes over here to the hard drives uh, just outside of view but you can extend that with another board with battery capacity that goes onto the plastic thing that i've removed so that goes here and those are you can get them with cash and with RAID 5 and 6 and SSD capable and stuff like that. 512, 1 gigabyte and 2 gigabyte of cash I think is available for that. Other connections, we have a USB connector down here. Uh, not sure what that is meant for because there's another one over here which is meant for the internal 
hypervisor or boot device. It says that. This one is just kind of just there. We have the connections for the backplane up there. We have this connection here. That's the CD-ROM drive that is um, connected there. Uh, we have another connector down here and that's all the light diagnostics panels and stuff up front. Moving over here, we actually have a connection, a connector that is not even on the drawing on this on the lid of the box and it looks very much to be another power connector for a GPU that is hidden away over there. It's really odd that it's not mentioned anywhere that there is another power connector right there. The fans are hot pluggable. Everything with orange is hot pluggable. Everything with blue is not hot pluggable. The fans are hot pluggable. The two power supplies uh, are hot pluggable from the back. And the hot drives here. If you see that, they have a little orange strip on them, which means that they are hot pluggable too. But that's about it for hot pluggable devices in the server. Everything else has blue plastic, which means you have to turn off the server to unplug them. Of other interesting, we have a couple of connections here. This is a power connector for if you want to put in a tape drive. And right beside that is another connector. It's kind of a power connector for extending the drive bay over here. These are the first eight drives and you can put in back planes for the next eight drives and they use a black connector like that. Uh, it's not really visible very much, but it goes down here on the other connector. And But the first one also has a big beefy power connector like that. Uh, it does not have that over here. And that might actually be why this USB port is here, because this USB port is also used for the tape drive, if you want to put that in. This was an overview of my new IBM Lenovo X3650 Model 4, which I've just purchased. And I'm hoping to uh, exchange my main server um, to be this one. I will need to do some upgrading before I do that because the M3 that I'm using right now is at the moment quite a bit more powerful than this one because that's a six core processor and it operates at 3.33333 some gigahertz. And this one is only two quad cores at 2.4 gigahertz. So, um, and I haven't even had this powered on. We're gonna be doing that in the next video where we will be mounting this and powering on and see if this works at all. So that's gonna be exciting. <laughs> it's a lot of money if this doesn't work. So thank you very much for watching my videos. Do subscribe to my channel so that you can see if this one works in the next video and have a really nice day. Bye bye!